happy Mother's Day to all the moms here today. It's good to see you today. God has blessed us with a beautiful day to come and worship him outside. So it's so good to have you here. Some have come from near. Some have come from far. Uh, we have come to worship the Lord this day. So welcome. Um, and, and certainly hope you have this will be a very special part of your Mother's Day and weekend. For those who are here as well as those who are watching, if you are watching, we do have our bulletin and our insert online, so we encourage you to do that. If not, if others, if you need a bulletin, please raise your hand. Or we, we're out of bulletins. Oh, my goodness. Well, we, we need to make more then. This is awesome. If anybody has one, they can share. And if you need one, uh, please let us know. Okay, thank you, Homer, for taking care of that. I do want to call your attention to our announcements, as I do. Um, please, they are in the bulletin. Our joint board, elders and trustees, we're reminded of your bit meeting this coming Tuesday at 630. It will be a Zoom meeting. Uh, also, our archives project continues. Um, please note that next Sunday we are going to be having our outdoor worship service again, and we will be doing that through the month of May. We will be going inside as we get into June. Our youth groups, please be mindful of your meeting this coming up next Sunday. Um, also note in the bulletin, with our getting back into our worship services, we are looking for those who'd be interested in helping with an audio-visual team. Uh, we do want to continue to show our services online, so we would need some help with that, as well as with our sound system in the sanctuary. We continue to have our flower calendar for anyone who would like to provide flowers for our services. Um, we th certainly thank Ann Lawrence for providing them today um, in memory of her mother uh, or, or in honor of her mother. Please note that the flower calendar is there uh, in the front. Also, um, Vacation Bible School is coming up. It is a couple of months till we get to it. We are planning on doing it in the church, uh, which is wonderful, uh, but we are wondering how many people want to do it. So registrations, please check our communi church communications for that. It is Mother's Day. I would love to take the opportunity right now to recognize our moms. So if you are a mother, please stand. We want to see who our moms are here today. And let's give them a hand for who they are and what they do for their families. Thank you, moms. Mothers, thank you so much for what you mean to your families. We thank so many of you what you also mean to our church family as well. May God bless you. May God bless your families. We do have a gift for moms today, and really this is a gift for all of our women here. Uh, it is a pen with a bookmark. It has something very nice on it. Uh, we want you to know that we are thinking about you. These gifts are where the uh, offering plates are. So please, uh, all the women, before you leave, please take one of these. Uh, if we don't have enough, we'll get more. Uh, but thank you so much. We, we appreciate our moms. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship as we have our prelude. It is by Russell Sapp. Jennifer is away today. Uh, maybe in a way Russell's kind of playing for his mom, Kim Grads, who will be singing today also. We'll have our call to worship. It's, uh, those providing our call to worship today are Ann Covington, uh, Destin McEwen, Kim Grabs, and Ann Lawrence, so we appreciate them. Uh, let us prepare our hearts as we do get ready for what I hope to be a very special worship service for us.
as we come to this service on Mother's Day, it is a time for us to thank God for our families. May it also be a time just to thank God that we are part of his great family. And as we come to worship as God's family, let us turn to God, let us bless him, let us praise his wonderful name. We sing a wonderful hymn of praise as we begin our service for the beauty of the earth. Let us stand as we sing together. seated. This morning it is a joy and pleasure to have Annie Liss with us. Annie is the granddaughter of Ray Horner. Uh, she and her husband Lewis serve in ministry in Lebanon and she just happened to be flying in yesterday uh, and it's always a pleasure to hear from Lewis or from Annie or from both of them that Annie is with us today and I think since the last time she has been with us, a lot has happened. So, Andy, we appreciate you being here, um, not only getting to hear about your ministry, but it's also great to have a mom sharing with us as part of Mother's Day as well. So, uh, Andy, I'll turn it over. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's uh, Day. Mother's Day in Lebanon was a few months ago, so I was with my kids for Mother's Day and with my mom for Mother's Day also. Uh, so the last time that I was here, I was actually here alone, I think, and I left from North Carolina and flew back to Lebanon the day that the revolution started in Lebanon. So that, a lot has happened since then. Uh, so October 16th in 2019, we had our revolution start and protests, and that began our economic collapse in Lebanon. And uh, then in March 2020, COVID started, we closed our airports, and so all of us were trapped in Lebanon. Um, and then the airport opened that June, and Louis and I were in charge of making sure that all the Americans that wanted to get out could get out, and so we said, we'll go last. And then August 4th, we had an explosion. So just a few things have happened. <laughs> Uh, Lewis and I like to say that at Horizons, we're really good at being in the wrong place at the right time. So uh, August 4th, we were eating dinner. We have in Lebanon just windows for walls. And we were eating dinner. It was about, gosh, well, dinner time. I actually don't even remember the time. And there was a big boom. And then the window fell on Davey, who you've met. Uh, he's eight now. He's actually here. But he was little, he was, he's still our baby, and pinned him to the table, uh, one big pane of glass about the size of one of these doors. And then the other glass 
fell and shattered against that. So it actually protected him from actually getting cut. And um, none of us were injured other than bruises and fear. Um, in our staff, only one person from the Horizon staff was injured. He had glass and he, it was also just needed stitches. So praise God. Um, in the Moravian book of texts today, um, the eternal God is your refuge, Deuteronomy 33:27, is exactly how we felt. Uh, God protected us, God protected our staff, and because none of us were in grave danger or injured, we were able to be on the ground and run to the aid of others. And so our staff immediately went and um, began helping with the cleanup, searching for any survivors. And from then, we've made a Lebanon crisis project with Horizons. Um, we were able to visit ourselves, just our organization, 255 houses, do assessment and rebuild, put in windows, help them fix appliances. Uh, and from those 255 houses, we've actually had 240 of those ask us to come back and share more and be able to do Bible study and um, help them clean their house, help them have community, help them find church, help them find family. Um, and one great story from this is we, we've had already training our staff to go and do house visits and share with people. And they've always wanted to be able to share with the Lebanese and not just the refugees. So this was a great opportunity for that. And in Lebanon, you get uh, written on your birth certificate whether you're Christian or Muslim or Druze. And so there's people who, they're just born Christian. And so to go to these people and share about Christ and about the church and say there's more, there's a community that you can be a part of, has been really exciting. And we had one lady that our team was going, they were fixing her windows, everything in her whole front room had just, was gone. And they were helping fix for a few days. And then... They were cleaning for her, they were bringing her food, and uh, one day they came over and she said, you know what I realized? I'm a Christian, but on my roof is these Syrian refugees who live, and so she started buying food for them and taking food to them and cleaning for them, and she said, we can do this too, it doesn't just have to be from an organization, which is our goal. Horizons is not a church, and we're, we specifically say we're not a church because we want the church to be where people go and where people have community. Um, another great exciting thing, which uh, this church actually support, supported us and wanted to know more about is our School of Hope. So since the protests began, so 2019, October, my kids have only been to school for three months, like in the classroom. Um, they only started online school this past October, late October. And so kids have just been out of school for two years, but our school that Horizons runs has actually started again. We have new students, um, and so we're really excited about that. And so if anyone wants to sponsor a kid, that's still an opportunity. We still have that school. And our school is actually the most self-sustaining because it, it's so wonderful to see these kids and see actual hope for their future. Um, Besides that, we've increased our food distributions to like numbers that don't even make sense anymore. We've handed out over 262,815 meals uh, since the explosion. And in lots of different ways, we've switched from doing just pantry baskets to actually bringing like real food, like deli sandwiches or baked goods, um, so that people who just, they could the grocery stores were gone, everything was gone. We've replaced appliances. We've uh, brought 2,089 packages of medicine. Um, and we've also been helping rebuild churches, our church engagement network. We had about 25 churches that were connected. And our main reason to connect to churches in Lebanon was people who needed help integrating Muslims into their church, people who had come to Christ, and they didn't know what to do with them. Um, but now we've been able to go, uh, we have over 80 churches that we're connected to and helping with, and we've renovated and fixed 10 churches from the explosion. We've installed more than 650 glass panes and fixed more than 100 doors. And I have lots of pictures of those things. Um, 
And then also now some of our staff and others are really excited to go outwards. And so they're going to be starting a farm and teaching people how to get food because a lot of the food has been, um, since we've, we've lost import through the port, we've lost, we had a huge freeze this year. So we've lost crops all over the place. And so um, with our food shortage, we're, we're teaching people now also how to get food and grow food because um, Beirut is just a city, but we have land. So there's so much happening now and it's been really exciting to be people who were already there. So many people ran to Beirut when there was the explosion and it was great to already be there and already be established and be able to help the people who were running to it to be able to actually do things. So your prayers have been so essential. We've needed them. It's been quite the um, stressful and scary situation. And with COVID, um, it's been very overwhelming for everyone. And so we really appreciate your prayers. We thank you for your support. And if you want to know any more about any of this, I can... Um, leave information as well and we can put links on the site as well. So thank you so much and happy Mother's Day and we love you. Thank you so much, Andy. That was incredible seeing the ministry you all are doing. Um, I know we've got probably a proud grandfather and proud parents here and family members for what you are doing. We're proud of you, too. You continue to be on our prayer list, you and your family, Annie. If you'd also like to support them, not only by our prayers, but also financially, I'd please get a chance to talk to Annie afterwards, and we will have the ways to do that, too. It sounds like they are doing so many wonderful things with the resources that they have. And so um, we ask God's blessings just to continue to be upon you. We come to a time now as we pray together as a church family. We want to continue to keep Annie and her family and their ministry in our prayers. I do have some several other concerns I do want to share with you. I'd like for us to remember today Britt Patterson and his family upon the passing um, this past Friday of his mother, Dot Patterson. Certainly keep Britt and family in your prayers. Also, we want to remember Terry Lathan. Terry's, uh, Terry, our prayers are with you. Uh, her, I understand her aunt, Maybelline Harris, also passed away recently. Um, there is some good news. Uh, we want to thank God for Tom Langan and his new wife. Uh, he and Jennifer Reeves were united in marriage a couple weekends ago, so we, let's pray for this new marriage. We have had some of our members in the hospital. Last weekend, Eddie Harper was there dealing with an infection. He is home now. We certainly hope things are going better for him. Uh, Marie Noah was planning to go in for surgery, but it did not work out, so she may have some surgery in the coming days. So, Marie, we're going to keep you in our prayers. Um, John Matthews had knee replacement surgery. He is home now recovering. Uh, Pat McGalliard had knee surgery a couple of days ago. She continues to be in the hospital, hopefully being able to come today. So please keep her in your prayers. One of our preschool students uh, that we have, had on, have on our list, Eleanor Ashburn, she is going to be going in for a procedure uh, for, for a feeding tube. Uh, there's an issue of her growth. So let's certainly pray for Eleanor and her family. Lynette Ashburn is one of our preschool teachers. Uh, Chris Bullen asked that we pray for his mother, Diane Bullen, uh, Bullen who is recovering from back surgery. Um, Ann Lawrence asked that we pray for her sister, Lynn Leahy, uh, who has a disease in which she is unable to communicate at this time. Um, Avery Parnell is a concern from Anita Jones of a young boy who this week had surgery in Dallas, Texas. It was a cranial reconstruction. His surgery did go well. We're very thankful for that. Certainly pray for Avery Parnell in this time of recovery. I think this past week was Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, we usually don't do the names uh, of our teachers and our school personnel, but I think this would be a very appropriate time to do that. Let's pray for our teachers, and we certainly appreciate them and our school staff. Those from our church family are Shannon Anderson, Candace Covington, Jay and Emily Duncan, David and Patty Durham. Uh, have Omni Grabs on our list because in these past weeks, Omni has been student teaching at South Stokes. Uh, he graduated this weekend, so we're very thankful for Omni, and I imagine he's going to be working in a school sometime very soon, um, unless he's going on to grad school. I guess we'll find that, that then one day he'll be back in school. Uh, Jen Harper, Jenny Key, Holly Mathis, Gary and Amy Nail, Patrick and Erica Nail, Kelly Nickel, Becky Patterson, Sheila Patterson, Amy Reeves, 
Anna Russell, Jennifer Shore, and Leah Simpson. Um, we also pray for our school preschool and very appreciative of the teachers and Tina Pratt, who's the director of that. So we appreciate them. Let's continue to pray for them. Also, I think it's also been Nurses Appreciation Week, and so uh, I'd like for us to also mission our health care workers from our church family. Uh, we have a very good list of this, too. Kathy Anderson, Chelsea Boaz Edmonds, uh, who's going to be a new mom uh, so coming up, uh, Daphne Brindle, Beth Donnelly, Sarah Doby, uh, Lynn Ensweiler, Grayson Finn, Mallory Finn, Lacey Grubbs, Kim Hall, Tyler Hill, Rhonda Huff, Robin Kincaid, Dottie Jones, Tim and Lori Justice, Scott and Tisha Cribs, Diane Marion, Lindsay Napurano, Sarah Russell, Andrea Seckman, Gail Stone, Kevin and Barbara Sudall, Jessica Wall, Robin Williams, Taz Swit, and Myra Rice. So let's certainly keep them in our prayers as well. Um, we do take our time to, to lift our prayers before God, and as we do, I'd like to offer a prayer, but also give you the opportunity during that time to live before God any prayers that are upon your heart. So let us pray. Our most gracious Lord and God, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come together as your family, as brothers and sisters in your name, and to look to you as our Heavenly Father. Thank you so much, Lord, not only for the blessing of this day and our time together, but also the blessing of our lives, the blessing of our families. Lord, we bring before you many concerns. You have heard the ones that have been mentioned from this lectern. But Lord, you also know the ones that are upon our hearts. And at this time, Lord, may we just lift our prayers to you from our hearts and ask, Lord, that you work in each and every life and situation that we pray for. And Lord, where we have our own personal needs that we need to bring to you, may we do so now. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, O Lord, hear our prayers. Incline your ear to us and grant to us and those that we pray for your strength, your love, your healing, and your peace. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We continue our service as we turn to God's Word. Uh, two passages, one from the book of Exodus. And here we hear the Ten Commandments that God gives us. And then from Ephesians, some wonderful teachings for families. Tina Pratt is our lay reader for our service. The print, the bulletin, in your bulletin there are the scripture readings. Good morning. Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven, above or on the earth, beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am I a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the, love, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the, the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, 
his ox or donkey or anything but that belongs to your neighbor. Ephesians 4, 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Thank you, Tina. And Tina instructed me and told me that uh, she, I think you read for Mother's Day last year, the same passage. So it's always good. It's a passage that keeps coming back. So thank you, Tina. Appreciate that. May God have his blessing upon this, the reading and the hearing, and certainly as we live out his holy word. So come to our offering. The plates are up the side. We are very thankful for everyone who uh, so wonderfully supports our church family and our ministry here. Uh, we thank you also for those who support other ministries as well, such as Horizons um, and other things such as King Outreach Ministry. So thank you so much. In your insert today, there is something about the Salem Town Mother's Day offering. If you'd like to contribute to that, there is information there of how you can do that for the residents who may not be able to afford uh, living there. So it's just another way to, to give and to do, and give ministry. For those who are not here, please just want to remind you that you can bring your gifts uh, by mailing them or bringing them to the church office or giving online, and we do appreciate it. I would like to offer up an offertory prayer, so let us pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you that you are such a great and giving God. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of this beautiful world, which we have sung about already today. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life that you give to each and every one of us. And we thank you, Lord. I thank you how that life is so reflected in our front lawn today. I thank you, Lord, also for the life that you gave to you give to us and the difference that you make in the gift of your son, Jesus. Lord, may it be because of all the blessings that you have given to us that we in turn want to give to you to give to your work and your ministry so that your good news can continue to be spread and that your good news can be can continue to live out. We thank you, Lord, for all the gifts that are used here in our church family and that we use for our community. We thank you, Lord, for other gifts that are given to help in the ministry of the world. And we heard some great ministry being done through what Annie shared. And we ask, Lord, for all gifts that come to you. May they be used for your honor and for your glory. For it is in your great name I pray. Amen. We continue our worship now as we do have our anthem for our service. I was just awaiting this guy. I guess he was praising the Lord as he was going by us. Uh, and I, I don't know about you all, but you might have noticed when Annie was speaking, I, there was a dog praising the Lord as it drove by too. So, you, you know, who knows what kind of difference we're making being out here today. So, uh, uh, But this time we will have our anthem for our service.
Thank you, Annette. Thank you, Dusty. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ann. And thank you, Drake, for the beautiful anthem today. I think I'm always amazed when I hear people sing in parks, and I'm always amazed how they always get to the end together. So uh, thank you so much for that. It's a beautiful way to celebrate our worship service today. In past years, when I've shared a Mother's Day message, many times it's been looking at what the Bible says about being a good mom. But for today's Mother's Day sermon, I want to talk about what it means to be a good child, uh, how to be good to our moms and good to our dads, and really how to be good to our parents. And to do this, I want us to look at the top ten list that we find in the Old Testament. That is the Ten Commandments. And talk about the one command that focuses on our parents. We heard Tina read for us earlier, Ephesians 6, 2. Honor your father and your mother. Today I want to talk about how to honor your moms, how to honor your dads, how to honor your parents. First of all, I want us to see some of the reasons why God gave us this commandment. Why did God include it in this ten, list of ten? Well, one reason is there are no perfect parents. Even if you have or had had great parents, they weren't perfect. And their parents weren't perfect. And if you're a parent, you're not perfect. I know I'm certainly not. And because we're not perfect, that doesn't give us an excuse to not honor our parents. It is important to honor the position of a parent. To honor the position of a parent even if they are flawed. The second reason why this commandment is one of them is you wouldn't be here, <laughs> duh. You wouldn't be alive uh, without your parents. God used your parents as a means, not really a means, he used it as the means of bringing you to the world. And for this reason, whether your parents are good or bad or indifferent, the fact is God used them to bring you to the world. A third reason is God chose your parents' makeup, or in other words, their DNA to make you unique. There's a great verse in Scripture, Psalm, one, in Psalm 137, I'm sorry, 139. In this chapter, King David is talking about how God knows all about him, even before he was born. In Psalm 139, verse 13, it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Here is a verse that says that for David, that not only for David, but also for you and me, that you are not here by accident. You know, there may be accidental parents, but there are no accidental babies. You know, there may be a child that comes along that is a surprise to a couple, but it's not a surprise to God. God planned you. And God planned the two people who would make up you with their DNA. Without them, you wouldn't be alive and you wouldn't be you. So why did God pick your parents? For some, that's a good question, especially since some parents are good and some are bad and terrible and some parents are absent. But God had a plan for you. And God was more interested in creating you than he was in your parents' parenting skills. And God was more interested in using your parents' DNA to make you. And then a fourth reason why this is one of the commandments is so that it may go well with you. Of all the Ten Commandments, the commandment to honor your father and mother is the only one that comes with the promise. Honor your father and mother as we see in the passage from Ephesians, and here's the promise. So that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Here, God gives us a key to living a long life and a good life. You do it by honoring your parents. So how do you honor your parents? You know, a lot of it really depends on what stage of life you're in. And as you grow through these stages of life, your relationship with your mother and father changes. Let's look at them. The first stage is as a child. As a child, you honor your parents by obeying them. You do what they ask. You follow their instructions. In our scripture reading that we heard the reason for this, Tina shared with us from Ephesians 6, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Obeying your parents willingly and cheerfully and immediately is a way to honor your parents. Now, one of the most important life skills you have to learn growing up is how to respond and relate to authority. It's one of the things that we really need to teach our children. And one of the authorities that God puts in our lives is the authority in our homes. A child who grows up thinking and saying, nobody's going to tell me what to do, 
is a child who's going to have a tough time growing up and a tough time in life. They probably won't hold a job for very long. You honor your mother and father by obeying them as a child, which makes a difference in the family and it makes a great difference in the child's life. The second stage is when you become a teenager and young adult. There are two ways you honor your parents in this stage. As a teenager and young adult, you honor your parents by respecting them. One of the places we find this in the Bible is Leviticus 19.3. Each of you must respect your mother and father. Now, respect doesn't mean you don't see your parents' weaknesses and their flaws. As you get older, their weaknesses and flaws become more obvious. And for some teenagers, that's all they see. But you need to realize that your parents are flawed human beings just like you. And that God says respect them despite their flaws. To respect your parents means that you accept them. You accept the good and the bad and the ugly, realizing that God has given your parents to you. And you might say, well, why should I expect, respect, accept my parents? I didn't have a choice about it. Well, your parents didn't really know what they were getting either, you, but unless you were adopted and you were chosen that way. To respect your parents also means that you forgive them. You need to forgive your parents of their faults and their weaknesses. Why? Because you're going to need forgiveness too. Forgiveness for your faults and weaknesses because nobody's perfect. And then as teenagers and young adults, you honor your parents by listening to them. Proverbs 13, 1 says, a wise son, and we can include a daughter here. He's his father's, and we can include mom and dad's, their instructions. In other words, intelligent children listen. Foolish children do their own thing. Whether you're still at home or out on your own, you should always listen respectfully to your parents. Even if your parents don't have it all together, there can still be some wisdom in listening to them. God made your parents for a purpose, and part of your parents' purpose is to help you become the person God wants you to be. And then there's the third stage of life. As an adult, you honor your parents by appreciating them. There are probably hundreds of things to appreciate about your parents. Let me give you two things in particular. Appreciate their effort. Parenting is difficult, time-consuming, and demanding. Would anybody here agree with that? I know it has been for me, yes. Have you ever thought about how much easier your parents' lives would have been if they hadn't had you? It would have probably been a whole lot easier. Also, have you ever thanked your parents for putting up with you? I imagine today, if we had the time, we could just go around and ask everybody. You could say one or two or three, and some of you could do several ways that you brought grief to your parents. Who else would have put up with you for that? We need to appreciate our parents' efforts. We also need to appreciate their sacrifice. Parenting is expensive. Anybody agree with that? Yes, it is. This week I Googled the cost of raising a child from birth to age 18. According to the Department of Agriculture, which does studies on this, Parents will spend an average of almost $285,000. $285,000 on their child, and that doesn't include if they come back home. <laughs> when a couple chooses to have a child, they really make an unselfish decision. They choose to spend money on what they could have spent on themselves. It's an unselfish decision as you put up with a lot of grief in raising your child and it costing a lot of money. Yet there are the rewards that come from it. Think about what your parents could have done with all the money that they, if they didn't spend it on you. Bigger homes, cars, vacations. But instead, they decide to spend it on you, on your clothes and your food and braces and doctor visits and school trips when you're able to take them and proms. I heard a good saying this past week, and that is, a parent is someone who has photos where there used to be money. <laughs> I think that's a good definition of a parent. For our adults here and our adults who are watching, if your parents are alive today, I hope you appreciate what they've done for you. And as your parents have gotten older, there may be a need that they have. And that need is to know that they have made an impact and a difference in your life. I hope you'll express your appreciation to them and that you'll do it on a regular basis. I know as I worked on this message this week, it gave me a great reminder to go see my mom who is still living. And I saw her this week and just thanked her for all that she's done for me. And I'm looking forward to seeing her later today so I can let her know that again. 
Another way as adults that we honor our parents is by providing for them. As you get older and as your parents get older, the roles reverse. Instead of them doing all the caring for you, the time comes when you do the caring for them. In 1 Timothy 5, there's a very important verse about providing for our family. It says that we should learn to, first of all, put our faith into action by caring for our family, and that repaying our parents and grandparents pleases God. In some ways, it may be by repaying with money in those situations where parents can't have their financial needs and you can help. Yet there are other ways to provide for your parents. I'm fortunate that my mom was a good financial planner, but now she needs someone to help with her finances and make sure her bills are paid and her taxes are due, are sent in. My mom also needs someone to make sure she has the needs that she met and where she lives. And these are some of the ways that my brother and I can provide for her. One of the best ways you provide for your parents is to be there for them, to give them your time. It's providing not so much with money, but providing with time. It's one of the best ways you show love is when you give your time to them. There's one other thing I want to say about honoring your parents as an adult. And this one goes a little bit deeper, is some of you may have parents who have hurt you deeply. And for anyone here or for anyone watching, if you're in that situation, I'm certainly very sorry about that. I will say this, and that is the Bible is very clear and stresses severe judgment on those who neglect and abuse children. Jesus said it would be better to hang a millstone around your neck and drown in the sea than to hurt a child. So what do you do? God is not asking you to deny what happened or suppress or excuse or ignore it. No, instead, God really wants you to face it. There are people who are carrying around a lot of baggage what may have happened with their parents and the sad thing is if you are you still may be reacting to it and you could be taking it out on your spouse or on your children and that's not fair it wasn't their fault it's not good and it's not smart to keep carrying that stuff around and in some ways it might be controlling you what i want to say in situations like this of deep hurt is you honor your parents by resolving with them in situations like this, it takes courage to try to make peace with your parents, but the best thing you can do is face the issue and be honest. You honor your parents by being honest with them. You can say something like, if you're in a situation and you go to them just to uh, say that you want to see the good in their lives, but you can't until you deal with the pain, and, and you talk about it, and you try to resolve it, and you try to thought, forge a new relationship with them. And if you have an unresolved issue with a parent who's no longer here, maybe that's a good time to see a good Christian counselor about it to get some help. I'd like to close by saying something for those whose parents are no longer here, and I know that's some of us here. There is a parent that you, there is a parent that you can honor, and that is your Heavenly Father. And really, God is the parent that we all can honor. Friends, if God is not your Heavenly Father, I hope you will receive his son, Jesus. The Bible says that all who receive Jesus, who believe in his name, become a child of God. If you are not one of God's children, I hope you'll become one. If you are one of them as God's child, honor your heavenly father as you obey him. And that means following his word. Also honor God as we you respect him and listen to him and appreciate him for all that he's done for you. And honor God the father as you live your life. If you're someone whose parents are no longer here, I believe that you can still honor them. You honor them in the way that you live your life. You're a good example and a good witness for your family. You help give your family a good name. It's living a life that not only pleases God, but also pleases your parents who have gone before you. You know, I can think of two things that I hope to hear when I get to heaven. One is Jesus saying, come on in. I'm glad you're here. I've got a place for you. The other thing I hope to hear is I look forward to seeing my dad, who's gone on to be with the Lord. I hope I've lived my life in a way that honors my parents, and I'd love to hear my dad say, Doug, thanks for honoring your mom and me as you've lived your life. I'm proud of you. On this Mother's Day, whatever stage you are in life, Please make it a point to honor your parents. May it be a day to honor them, not just for one day, but to honor our moms and our dads for the rest of our lives. Let us pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for this day. 
but it's wonderful time just to be able to talk and share about what it means to honor our parents. I pray, Lord, that each of us will take these words to heart, no matter what stage of life that we are in. And I thank you. I thank you today for moms. Thank you for those moms, Lord, who do so much for their families. I thank you, Lord, for new moms that we have who are here and may, who may be watching. I thank you for those who are going to be moms and just bless them. Lord, I just thank you so much for those moms who just care and love for their children in so many ways. And um, not only those who have had their own children, but also those who are in blended families. Just uh, may your blessings, your strength, your wisdom, uh, your peace be upon them. And Lord, certainly be with those who are missing their moms this day. I certainly want to just pray for Britt and his family. And, and there are others in our church family and those who are watching who are without their moms this Mother's Day. And I would certainly be with them in a very special way. Thank you, Lord, for the very special people that you place into our lives. We thank you, Lord, for those good moms that we have. But even in those situations where our parents haven't been what they could be, Help us, Lord, just to turn to you, to seek your wisdom and your help, and just do the things that you would have us to do. And Lord, for all the moms and dads that are with us today that are uh, watching us, may we do our best to be the best for our families. For all these things I do thank you for and ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn today is in your bulletin. The hymn is, Lord Bless Our Homes. Let us stand as we sing. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. And moms, women, please make sure you pick up a gift before you leave. Thank you so much for being here today.